God, I think 19 years of uh, Queen's Comedy Club. Yes. Um, I suppose back then, 19 years ago, you would have said you've been happy to do it for 19 years. You said you're, uh, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> that uh, you'd still have a job in 19 years at Queen's. Or 19 years on, looking back, do you reckon that? Um, no, because it wasn't a job. That was the whole point. I mean, whenever you started, I think that's the difference. In now, comedians doing it now, and whenever I started, I think maybe it, I don't know, but I see younger comics now starting and they say there's some sort of career and it's like a job and it is a job but whenever I started it wasn't it was just something you did it was just a bit of crack it was never you know I think it's for nothing and just something on the side while you're doing your main job yeah it was just it was just something to do it was, it was so what, at what point crack. did you know that it, it, it evolved from just being a part-time job to actually uh, when I started earning more doing this than I did doing my actual job and that's when you is that when you thought when you made it no well, well I made it from, no and nobody ever thinks I made it um, no, it was just, the, the, well, I gave up my job then because I got a job on UTV, on the that? Kelly show, uh, doing these sketches coming in and out of the ad breaks. It was myself and uh, Jacob Kane and Kevin McAleer. And we were doing these sketches coming in and out. We lasted two weeks, we got sacked. And uh, we, we offended lots of people and they got rid of us. And I'd given up my job at that point, so then I was stuck and that's what I was doing, so I had to just do it. Uh -huh. And so that's how I ended up just doing it full time. Do you think there's a lot of pressure now for comedians to sort of to create to move into sort of TV and to you know to leave the stand up behind the traditional stand up behind and then move into TV? Because a lot of them are now coming between TV panel shows mm. and then now even films and yeah, no, the film thing was always there and the, the TV thing was always there, but uh, now it just seems to happen so much quicker. We were always talking about this at the weekend, the, the guy, and and it just happens so quickly. Like somebody appears on a panel show and does a stint on a panel show for maybe two weeks running. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden they've got a national tour and they're playing concert bands. You go, what the, you do you you know you've done two Edinburghs and all of a sudden you think you're but because their face fits and you know you've got skinny jeans and a weird haircut you know that then you know I was working with somebody last weekend who, that you can see his whole career or he can see his whole career moving on uh, you know Whereas mapped you just, out for him. Yeah, they basically work for it, but he just they have it more given given to them. No, they don't have it given to them. I think it's given to the, it, it maybe thrust on them too soon and. They're not fully formed yet. I think it takes ages for a comedian to actually find their own voice and, and you know, just find their own voice and, and what they're comfortable with. People, when you always, everybody, when you start out, you always end up being a version of someone you like. That that's just the way it is. You know, there's a certain voice comes through. Whether people are Tommy Tiernan fans or Eddie Izzard fans, and there's always a bit of that comes through, and it takes a while to lose that and find your own. So it sounds really. Arty, but you know, but you do find your own voice, and uh, it takes a while to do that. And a lot of these people haven't done that yet. So you disappointed that? Uh, how do you feel about the lack of sort of Northern Ireland or local talents showing up on these uh, tours and uh, panels, shows, and breaking through? Oh, when it comes to TV and people from here, that's a totally different thing. Um, but there are people here doing stuff, and, and you know, there, there are uh, exactly uh, two hundred people more than there were whenever I started. There was, yeah. there was nobody, and there hasn't been. It's only in the last four or five years that open nights have started and I don't know what took them so long and uh, the people are doing their own wee thing and they're starting off and trying material out and you know they don't have to jump in at the deep end which is good so they can they've got time to find their own voice and, yeah. and build it up and they don't have to jump in we had to jump in at the deep end that was the only thing because there was no one there were like three of us so you think in a few eventually uh, more people from here will be showing up on TV with their no <laughs> no, because it's a complete, you know, oh, we've got someone with uh, your accent. Uh, you know, there's a quota, you know, you can't have, like I, I do bills in England and they won't have two Irish acts on the bill because, you know, like they won't have two black acts on the bill, they won't have two gay acts on the bill, they won't have two women on the bill. And honestly, I'm not, like, exact, that is absolutely true. That's how they work. Yeah, that's how they work because they see you as some sort of special, like, oh, well, you're an Irish act, we've already got an Irish act on. And you go, well, it doesn't matter where you come from, you're just an act. It doesn't matter if you're black or if you're a woman, you're just an act. But they won't, they genuinely won't, and it's the same in the telly, that they've got their Irish act and they've got their mm. this, and it's very rare that you'll get more than one in any, in any TV show. Well, it is strange, but do you have, do you yourself have had several stints with TV, of, with the um, Blizzard of Odd and uh, Great Unanswered Questions, yeah. obviously recently, uh, and now obviously transgressed into Ask Rod Gilbert. Yeah, <laughs> And I wanted uh, to ask you a bit more about that. <laughs> I don't think I can talk about that on camera. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I, uh, I got David Booth and he said the exact same thing. Yeah, <laughs> I can't talk about that on camera. <laughs> um, what do you think of the show? Mm. Mm. 
You like to be on answer the questions, though. Yeah, it's my idea. And uh, yeah, I came up with it. Um, God, how many years ago? And um, the idea was it would just be a radio show, and then it ended up going on the TV, and then it's not on the TV, but it's still on the radio, and it, and it goes out in Radio Four. It's the only comedy show ever to come out of Radio Ulster, BBC Northern Ireland, that's on Radio Four. And uh, I'm very proud of that, and uh, and I really really like it. People really forward love it. That's so you got four seasons done so far. Yep, and then it's going on to four extra, and they're going to repeat uh, all the, the shows we've ever done. So I think we've six, seven series. Mm -hmm. So they're going to repeat them all on, on four extra. So that's really good. Yeah. I think we're coming back in the new year. Yeah, so we're going to do another series for Radio Four and on TV. Mm, doubt it. <laughs> no, I think there already is a show on TV, I think. So <laughs> you can't have two of those shows on at the same time. It's like getting two Irish acts on the same bill. You can't have <laughs> two shows on at the same time. Right. Colin Murray, thanks very much. No problem.